Paul from AppWorks, and today I'm going to walk you through how to dynamically format data on your layouts so that it changes based on the value of the data you're seeing. Uh, there's basically three different ways to do this. You can do this using the data formatting options in the inspector. You can do it with conditional formatting, or you can do it with the hide object when option. Uh, first thing I'm going to cover is the data formatting tool. So on this layout, we have a very basic invoice. We just have a list of products and how much they cost, uh, how much is owed, things like that. Um, what you'll first notice is the cost of these products is showing up only as a number. You don't really, you can't really tell that it's money we're talking about. So in order to fix that, we would go into layout mode, select the fields we want to change, and then go to the data tab and scroll down to data formatting. First thing you'll notice is that number is already selected. Date, time, and image aren't available because FileMaker already knows what type of field this is. So you're limited by that. Now you select the format you want. In this case, we don't want Boolean, that's just a one or a zero. A decimal would work somewhat because you get the trailing zeros if you want, but in this case we want currency. So your options for currency are how many zeros you want to have after the decimal point, if any. You don't have to use this. You could have none or six if you wanted. Um, how to display the dollar sign. And also, if you want a dollar sign or if you want a different character, you can put in anything you want here. You could put two S's or five W's or whatever. The other nice feature about this is the negative option. So what this get lets you do is decide how to display a negative value, which is great for any sort of accounting or invoicing or things like that. Um, you can choose where to put the negative sign or to use carrots or other values instead for a negative value and then change the text color, which automatically it's set to red, which I think is great. Um, you lastly have what you want to use for a decimal and what you want to use for a thousand separator in order to display that information more legibly. So that all looks good. We exit. Now you see all these values have a dollar sign, a thousand separator, a zero, and the negative values are showing up in red. Makes it much easier to view. Uh, one thing also that you should be aware of is when you're doing percent on a number, that's looking for a decimal. So if you have a field with 0.2 in, the f in it, you would see 20%. If you had a field with just two, you would see 200% because it's assuming you're doing a decimal or even a percent calculation. Now, other options, of course, are dates, um, which I find also very helpful, especially on a list view. So right here, we have a list of all the invoices and the dates that they happened on. It just isn't formatted nicely. It's easy enough to read, but I just get anal about how to see these things. So when we go here to data formatting, we have all these different options of if you want the full year or not. You can do it with text to make it more easily readable. Um, what I like to do on a list, especially if it's something that's going to be printed out, you can do a tr uh, leading characters for months and days. What that basically means is you would have either a space or a zero in front of, say, for September, you would have a nine, but you would have a zero nine. So what that does, especially if you're limited on space, is it keeps everything lined up nicely. You know exactly how much room it's going to take, regardless of what date it's going to be. You have zero nine zero six instead of just nine six. You also have the option to do something completely custom, where you can have the full day, the short day, or even the month first. If you want the month to be like that, you don't, and you want Q4. That might not fit, so let's make this a little bigger. Take a look. Looks kind of weird, but if that's what you want, that's what you can have. Also available are times, which is just the same thing where you set the hours, minutes, or seconds, uh, depending on how, what you want the user to see. Or uh, if you have a container field, you can set up whether the image gets cropped off or enlarged to fit, and how it's aligned in there, if it's centered, if it goes to the top or the bottom. We also have options for whether it's an image or a PDF or an MP3. Uh, I won't go into that too much, because that's a whole separate topic about how you work with containers. Uh, lastly, this also works on merge fields. So if you want a field data to show up in a label, such as we are here, you can set the formatting down here. The only difference is 
that FileMaker doesn't automatically know what type of field this is now. So you get to select if it's a date, a time, or a number. Now in this case it's actually a text field, so whatever I change in here won't change how it's observed. Uh, but you just need to be careful to make sure you have the right type and the field is actually that type of data when it's being displayed. So those are the basics on how to use the data formatting option in here. Uh, what has more value more often is using conditional formatting to set uh, the appearance of a field on a number of different conditions as well as with a number of more formatting options. So that's what I'm going to cover in the next video on the basics of how to do the dynamic types of changes.